So God could not release rain upon the face of the earth because it would be wasted. Someone to till the earth would need to be in place before God can release the resource of rain. And so Jehovah Elohim, in keeping with this fatal lack that would not allow God to release rain, stepped out of the quadrant of the Godhead and the Bible says he formed man out of the dust of the ground. Now notice, first of all we have bara created man. Then the next part of the process is formed. And that's modeling. Are you there? When he finished the process of modeling, he did something. And what he did is what I'm concerned about this morning. He breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and the consequence of that activity was that man became a living soul. Now stay with me. When we say he became a living soul and it will interest you to know. Are you there? It will interest you to know that that which derives from God, the component of man that derived from God was transmitted into that which was modeled. He gave life to dust. He became a living personality whose consciousness was collocated on his soul. So he became an intelligent personality that could interact with his environment. Are you there? You will notice that when the devil came to tempt him in the garden, the devil came interacting with his soul, interacting with his intelligence, causing him to make a choice, causing him to analyze. So his temptation was at the level of his civilization because the breath of the Almighty had made him a living soul. My discussion this morning is about the personality Jehovah Elohim. This Jehovah Elohim that we are about to discover, uh, he, he likes, he does so many things by breathing on people. So many things. If you study your Bible, you'll find out that in the book of Psalms, the back end of the deliverance of the children of Israel from the land of Egypt was unveiled. And the back end of that process, the back end of that deliverance was captured adequately in the book of Psalms. Because if you were following the story in the book of Exodus and you see Moses raising his staff, you will think that is the staff of Moses that parted the Red Sea. But the psalmist got more insight about what happened. And the psalmist said it was by the blast of his nostrils that he parted the Red Sea. In fact, the name of Moses was not mentioned in that psalm. This Jehovah Elohim I'm trying to introduce you to, he achieved so much by breathing. Are you there? So much. Man was a dead corpse on the ground. Just a container that was made out of dust. And then Jehovah Elohim. Do you still remember how Elisha raised the son of that woman? The dead son of that woman. You know he stretched himself. That was what Jehovah Elohim did on Adam. He stretched himself on clay dust and breath and climbed down that breath <laughs> made him alive <laughs> hallelujah 
Now the reason why I'm doing this is because somewhere in this service, Jehovah Elohim will on you. <laughs> so that we can leave this place to do greater works for his name, for his glory. So the moment the breath of life came on this individual, he became living. He stood up. And it was notable that his consciousness was strong on its soul. So the level of consciousness he had was soulish. Now, in the arrangement that we have in the book of Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, he was man of man. What I mean by that is, he was man having the nature of man. And at this time, the nature of man was not yet corrupted. So he was man having the uncorrupted nature of man at the time. Are you there? But the process had not yet finished. And I don't want to take you to the next process because the next aspect of the process would require that he eat. Of the tree of life. So that the Holy Spirit can now tabernacle his spirit being. His spirit chamber. Where is a vessel? Your spirit is a vessel. It's a container. It's a house. So when he eats of the tree of life, the spirit of God will now function by the nature of man, but man will function by the nature of God. So it is a combination between the spirit of God within his spirit and the humanity in him. So the virtues of God will be manifested, the power of God the glory of God will be manifested through human virtues and man will be powered by God. It's like a transformer that, that steps down the dimensions of God into this physical frame of reference. But as at Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, he was a living soul. And he was so because of the breath of Jehovah Elohim. Now, and there are many things you can accomplish as a living soul. If you go to China and you see the skyscrapers and all the development that has taken place, it is not because of the Spirit of Christ that those developments have taken place. But dominion has levels. The first level of dominion is what we call the Adamic dominion. Because God said to him, be fruitful, multiply, and have dominion so at the adamic level there was a capacity for dominion uh, because this man can reason this man is intelligent he can understand concepts he can see the patterns in creation he can identify that there is something called gravity because of experiments he's running and he can take advantage of the laws that were present not because he has the spirit of Christ, but because he is Adamic. And at the Adamic level, he can administer a level of dominion. Dominion at the Adamic level is going to be natural. It's going to be based on natural laws and principles. Bending them and aligning them to achieve a significant task. So Adam became an intelligent fellow that could relate with his environments and harness the potentials that were domiciled in them. If you are still with me, say, Amen. Amen. Now, the next aspect of this presentation would have required that I take us a bit to show us how Satan interacted with Adam within that estate of his being a living soul and what led to the fall of man but I don't have time for that because we have celebration in the evening so you will study that but he was a living soul he was intelligent and you can achieve so much 
from that standpoint. The richest men in the world are not believers. That's Adamic dominion. It is powerful. But that's not where God wants us to operate from. So let's go to the second level. I want to talk about the third level, but this is the first level. The breath that made us a living soul. Exactly. Come with me to the book of John. Go to the